Hi, I'm Keith, and today we're talking capacitors. A capacitor failure is usually the first sign of a bigger problem. Maybe an issue with your start switch, a low voltage problem, or the load is more than the motor can bear. So, if your capacitor has failed, make sure you do some investigating before replacing it. Just for fun, we blew up a capacitor, so stick around to the end of the video to see that. We do sell over 200 different types of capacitors at emotorsdirect.ca, from trusted brands including Leeson, Packard, and Rotom. If you're looking for a capacitor today, visit our website or contact our team using the link in the description to find your replacement. If you're interested in learning more about motors, please hit the subscribe button and check out our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. This really helps us grow our audience. We are going to start with the basics. What's a capacitor? Capacitors are electrical components that are wired into a circuit to mitigate power issues. They can build and hold an electrical charge to be used later when needed by the system. So, why do single phase AC induction motors need capacitors? On its own, single phase power can't create the rotating field needed to start an electric motor or produce enough torque to move the load. But with the start capacitor wired into the circuit, the motor starts. And with a run capacitor, torque is more constant. If your motor is slow to start, fails to start, or you hear a constant buzzing during operation, your capacitor might be failing. Typically, I see capacitors fail due to overloading, which can lead to a short circuit, open circuit, or deterioration. Start capacitors in particular aren't designed for continuous operation. They just can't dissipate heat fast enough. If they stay in the circuit for too long, they'll simply overheat and fail, which usually isn't an issue unless something's up. This is a sign that your switch may be malfunctioning, you have a low voltage problem, or the motor's being overloaded. Short cycling also leads to issues with start capacitors. If your motor is starting and stopping a lot in a short period, the capacitor doesn't have enough cool down time before it needs to perform work again. I see this with a lot of our agriculture customers, high vibration. On an auger motor, for example, leads to poor connection at the capacitor's terminals which creates a higher resistance and excess heat. To avoid this failure, just make sure the capacitor is connected properly. Hot and sub-zero temperatures can also affect the ability of the capacitor to perform its job, leading to failure. Just one more bonus to living in the great white north. Lastly, capacitors are what we call wearable components. They'll deteriorate over time and are meant to be replaced regularly. The rate of wear depends on how often it starts and stops and the environment it's in. In a perfect world, you could see a capacitor last 10 plus years. But we do see scenarios where customers are replacing capacitors every few years. Next, we'll cover what you need to do to confirm your capacitor has failed. Keep in mind, capacitors can hold a dangerous and potentially deadly charge for some time after being removed from power. You must discharge the capacitor before handling. This can be done by placing a screwdriver across the two terminals. Check for any leakage, cracks, or bulges, and see if the membrane on the top of the capacitor is still in place. These ones are pretty obvious, but it can look more subtle. If there are no visual indicators of failure, you'll need to test the capacitance of the capacitor with a multimeter. Remove the capacitor from the circuit and connect your multimeter to the capacitor terminals. If your multimeter can test for capacitance, select that mode, wait a few seconds, and note the reading, which will be a microfarad rating. The rating should be within a range that you can find on the label of the capacitor. If you confirmed your capacitor failed, you'll want to determine what actually caused the failure before replacing the capacitor. Again, this is probably an issue with the switch, a voltage problem, or a load problem. Once you're ready to replace a failed capacitor, locate the ratings on the side of the old capacitor. You're looking for the microfarad or MFD rating and the voltage. Also, Note the shape and dimensions of the old capacitor to ensure that the new one can easily be mounted in the same place. Then, head over to the link in the video description to find your capacitor. Once on the site, use the menu on the left-hand side, search for and select the correct voltage and MFD ratings. To lower the search results further, you can also select start or run capacitor and the capacitor shape. Make your selection from the search results. If you're unsure of your selection or if you'd like any assistance, you can get in contact with our team of experts through the link in the description. 
Now that you have your replacement capacitor, let's go over the steps to replace it. This process is the same for the start and run capacitors. And if you're working with the issue right now, please ensure you got on the proper PPE. Step one, cut power from the circuit. Step two, locate and discharge the capacitor safely. Step three, double check that the new capacitor ratings match the old one. Step four, remove the old capacitor and install the new one. I prefer to do one at a time so I don't need to label the wires. Step five, resume power to the circuit and test the motor. And there you have it. You've successfully replaced an electric motor capacitor. Whoa, there you go. I'd love to hear about the last time you replaced a capacitor or if you ever blown one up on purpose or by mistake. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, Canada's largest motor search engine. Take care.